Q, so sorry. Gonna... Again, I, I held no. this up. So Q, take no, it away, you, my man. You did it. Take it opinion. away, baby. Do you mean like sort of on? Uh, I guess I love you. Tragedy struck. I see you haven't lost your touch. Hey, everybody. Q here from Project Nerd with another amazing episode of the Nerdcast Recast. Now, guys, I'm I'm not even going to try and, and bury the lead here. I am super excited about this episode, and I have a co-host helping me on this episode that couldn't be more perfect, and that is Jay from High Five the Podcast. What's going on, Jay? Hey, Q. It's like we haven't talked since our last podcast episode. I'm so happy to be here. It's, and I know that you're extremely excited because specifically I'm here. And that's, that's right. Great for you. Because as everyone knows, you and I, much like robots, shut down completely in between recording sessions and uh, only really get to talk to each other when we're recording a new podcast. So that's fun and exciting. And to make it even more exciting, we are joined by an amazing guest, the one and only Felissa Rose. Hello and welcome oh. to Nerdcast Recast. Thank you so much. I love it. We're J and we're Q. I'm going to be F. Cool. Let's yes. <laughs> You're officially <laughs> one of the crew now. That's how it I'm goes. One of the crew. I love Once it. Once you go down to a single letter uh, moniker, you're, you're one I of mean, us now. She, that's F and great. <laughs> now as always nerdcast recast is brought to you by geek garage so you're going to head on over to geekgarage.com to see some of the world's coolest geek and pop culture themed vehicles as well as stay up to date on events and even register your nerdy car that's geekgarage.com geek hyphen garage.com let's get that out of the way because i am ready to chat with felissa Oh my gosh. Thank you. Uh, so much. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for having me. It means so much to me. I really appreciate your time. Oh, we appreciate oh. your time for sure. Yeah. My, my goodness. We, I, we jumped all over this and we're like, okay, we want to have a great conversation with somebody and we've got Felissa Rose on the dock. And I was like pushing people out of the way. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to be on that episode. You better give me that episode. Uh, so I, I, I couldn't be happier to be here. I mean, it's just, from one gorehound to another, thank you for for taking the time. I mean, where do you even find it? You uh, well, one okay. Can I I just can I geek out for a second, Q? And, and I'm, <laughs> of I'm course, so sorry, I just have to no, do this that's, first. That's so, what this is about. Go for it. Where do you even find the time to talk to us? You do so much <laughs> every year. Like you're doing like eighty movies a year. And you're <laughs> stuff, and you're you're all over the place, Felissa. How do you have time to do this? I. I am so excited to do it all. Like I just choose to not sleep and enjoy every second of the day. I'm really, really happy. I love horror movies. Um, I love, I'm still doing conventions. Thank goodness. We still have some uh, pop-up markets around that have been exceptional. We've been super safe. And I just can't get enough of being with people in our community. And that was the hardest part for me in quarantine was not being able to see people, chat with people, you know, in that way. So I, it's it's just exciting. You know, anything I can do, I want to jump on. I, I love that. Well, if anybody uh, is curious as to your oeuvre, they have a ton of films and things to choose from. Um, if you had to pick one, this is a random question. If you had to pick one that needs to be someone's introduction to Felissa Rose, what oh. of your catalog would you recommend to somebody? Wow, that's an excellent question and a most difficult one. You, um, you know, gloves, you know, gloves, gloves are off. Old... We're going hard. We're we're we're, we're jumping. Gotcha, in. It's gotcha journalism, is what this is. We're, we're <laughs> asking the tough questions. Orb. I'm like, oh, uh, no, I, I mean, obviously the one and only, I think if you're really going old school, classic, it would have to be Sleepaway Camp is the beginning yeah. of my life. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's, it would have been easy for us to start there and, and lead you and lead you in. That's, that's obviously the big one that everybody knows. We're huge fans. I can tell you, I can tell you that. Uh, but to your point, that's where it all began. Uh, how, remind me, how young were you when you got that? I was 13 when we made Sleepaway Camp. I was in eighth okay. grade. I had to miss the first two months of eighth grade. I was like, 
I have an eighth grade child. So I look at her and I'm like, I was at camp. I was doing, doing some weird shit. Your age. I was doing some weird shit when I was your age. You better I believe it. I had iron. You should only know. <laughs> Well, I actually, that, that is a perfect segue into a question because Jay and I are both dads as well. And yes. we know that definitely some of our catalog is probably questionable for our kids to check out. Um, have your kids seen your movies? Have they seen notably Sleepaway Camp? They have. Nice. They, my kids, my husband is a huge, the way we met, was because he's a huge horror fan, huge. And Sleepaway Camp was a film that he adored from when he was, he's seven years younger than I am. And he saw it at 12, uh, the, I think it was Media Treasures, maybe, oh, on sure, VHS. Yeah. Oh, yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Right? And he saw that and he's like, I'm gonna marry that girl. And started a band called CKY. I was about to and say, can we, can we talk? I don't want to just say your husband as well, because he's, you know, CKY, kill yourself, Camp. Camp, kill yourself. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> yourself. he loved that movie. He loved Sleepaway Camp. And so he, uh, so then we got married and had these three unbelievable children. And he immediately, from when they were so young, started them on everything that was probably questionable. I mean, they've seen it all <laughs> Poltergeist, Exorcist, Misery, The Shining, Sleepaway Camp, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I, I love it. You Honestly, it. It, it sounds like you guys are raising them right. And I said our <laughs> stuff is questionable, but I did not say that our kids have not seen it because they definitely have. Because How old are your kids? Jay? Uh, okay, well, I, uh, I'll i start. So I have one that's five, just about to be six. Oh. And so she's, she's a youngie. And then I actually have one who is turning one in a week. <gasps> so she is, she was born, okay. So, Felissa, I have to tell you this. We went into uh, the hospital on February 18th to have uh, our little girl, Chandler. And then we came out and went into maternity leave. And then I never came back into the world because we were in quarantine, like, from then on. So, like, we literally can age our first child by how long quarantine and COVID started because we went directly into. Yeah. And so, uh, so we have that one. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, we, our, our daughter, Emma, our older daughter, she was, we had horror movies on all the time. I mean, I do a thing where I document a different horror movie every night in the month of October. And so we just always have them on. And there was yeah. one, I have a very vivid memory of my daughter, Emma, being about a year and a half old, kind of sitting in her bouncer, you know, and we had, uh, uh, it was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, I believe. The opening scene is he comes out of the ground as the worm and, and eats her. <laughs> and oh. that scene happened. And I just was like, oh, crap, my daughter's in the room. And I looked at her and she paused. And she goes, <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> All right. I, yeah. At that point, you were like, that is my I don't child. Know. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. know if I'm winning or losing, but I'm one of them. You are definitely winning. Yes. I, I, that met so many amazing children at conventions. And I have to really say, children raised on horror movies are so, it's interesting. They're super intelligent and, and um, it's really amazing to me. There's a very certain type of child who is interested in horror movies and I find them to be intellectually, um, you know, I want to Just put a pin in that. that, Felissa, because that's a conversation I want us all to have. Because that's a great segue to accused girls, uh, <laughs> or accused or accused kids, because they're a bit older and were raised on this stuff, for sure. How old so, are they, kids? So, so I have a uh, newborn son who is uh, five and a half months old. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, so he's a he's a little bitty guy, uh, Theo, uh, and then I have. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I love uh, his I, name. Theo thank you. is the best his, name. His full name is Theodore Indiana. Uh Come like Indiana on. Jones. Yeah, yeah, and they call him Teddy. Teddy Indiana. The cutest thing in the world. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh and then I have two daughters. Uh I have Reagan, who is age 12, just had a birthday, just turned 12. And then was that name deliberate? 
it was it was uh reagan from the exorcist exorcist yeah Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh yeah. and then my oldest is gabriella or gab is what she oh. goes by and she yeah. is thir 13 she's about to be 14 next month oh i have one yeah. turning 14 next month too what day you? march 23rd uh we're march 4th got it so they close win. though Mar they, march they, they babies win, though. win those ages are really i i have it the opposite i have two oh no you have wait you have two girls and a boy i have the same thing i have two boys two girls and a boy yeah nice that's i have awesome. two I have girls 13, and then that's it 15. what's that i just have two girls and then i stopped i don't know <laughs> if you're with if you're on our team you're having that's a right well, yeah if i say that's right give me a next give up me a good distance of years and there's there's a gap for q there may be a gap for me if we're it's looking crazy. at the odds just in this sampling of three people That's right here, crazy. your odds are your odds are good. So how old were yours, Felissa? So I have a son who's 11, a daughter who's 13 turning 14, and a 15 turning 16. And I'm That's about to awesome. strangle myself or stab myself with my own <laughs> <laughs> So have you guys <laughs> been in oh. quarantine together the whole the whole time? The five of us. Woo! Wow. How are, you, how are you passing? How are you passing the time? Oh, I did a lot of dancing on TikTok. Sure, sure. Nice, nice. I was yep, TikTok, yep, yep. Whatever these moves are. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I, it would take me a month. To, I Talk did that fluid, three. Okay. As a TikTok fluencer, I don't know what the terminology oh, is anymore. It's horrible, and they are not. They have no filter. They're like, you suck. You are terrible. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me. I think I'm pretty good. They're like, you are. Then they like, they want to do it together. And I'm in the background doing my own thing. And they're like, get out, woman. Get out. You're cringy. I'm my, like. Do you know the kids things the I've lived through and or died through? My kids are the opposite. They were like, dad, hey, dad, we need to get dad on this TikTok because his dancing is ridiculous and we're going to go viral. So like, <laughs> dad, come over here and dance with us on this TikTok. And I'm back there like, oh, yeah, I can figure this out. No problem. See, and they do like, that with my husband. I walk in and I'm like, you know, doing my thing. And they're like, oh, OK, thanks. Like, don't call us. We'll call you. But dad, come uh -huh. here. <laughs> I'm like, how did I become the uncool one? Well, like, mom, you're terrible. Dad, get in this TikTok. <laughs> Amazing. He, they, they like, oh, he's so great. Okay. <laughs> Dad, grab your axe. We got some TikToks to make. That's, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Well, yeah. speaking of quarantine, um, you know, a lot of people that we've talked to, 2020 was kind of like a weird year. Some people consider it like a missing year, like, oh, you know, but weird. some people have kind of used that time to work on a lot of like passion projects. We found that like passion projects have like come out of the woodwork in 2020 because everybody's like, well, now I've just got an abundance of time. So this thing I was kept yeah. putting off, I'm just going to do. Is there anything in particular that you kind of dug, dug into in 2020? Well, I have to say, so for me, this is what my year looked like. If you, okay. if you have a second, yeah, I, absolutely. so we, we were locked in March 13th. I felt like the door shut and we were sort of on house yeah. arrest, right? Sure. We were like, oh, it's like, I like that the date is burned in your mind. It's it's kind of like it's like oh yeah, oh, I remember March thirteenth of twenty. Like March thirteenth, <laughs> there was a terrible oh thing. I had to go. Uh, no, I had to go uphill both calendars. What? It was crazy. I because school shut down. Every it was like it was a big boom. You're done, right? So I started working on some amazing projects with people via zoom dark offerings which is a, a quarantine zoom film and nice. um, i did another one with my friend michael Verratti, and that was fun that keeps you going i did some other films for my friend anthony leone like he was filming you know just iphone stuff mm -hmm. and then things started to pick up it was like all of a sudden may hit uh, then i did the tiktoks tiktok mm -hmm. disaster but then I started talking to a lot of people who were like, hey, would you come film in Vegas? 
And I was like, are we going to be safe? What is that going to look like? So kind of come end of June, I went out like insanely. And I started doing a ton of these conventions and a ton of um, film projects. Um, I just did stream with the Terrifier guys. And I just did um, Massacre Academy with a bunch of amazing people in, in uh, Pittsburgh. Um, so it was like on a loop. I did Lady Killer with Jeremy Spencer, who's the ex drummer for Five Finger Death Punch. So we uh, were, ha, ha. I did Joe Bob Briggs Haunt. I was about to say, I like, know you did Joe Bob Briggs. That was really neat. I love to see him come back around. I mean, I grew up with Joe Bob Briggs and his, uh, his, his evening horror movies and his. Well, you know, he's on Shutter, right? Yes, uh, that I, that's what I'm so been so excited to see yes. him come back and make it back into the the spotlight. Um, I feel like it was well deserved, and he was missed in my household. So missed. So I get to hang with him all the time. He uh, played my brother in a film in Vegas, um, and we we go on a little bit of a killing spree. You know, just as you do, do. average as brother sister do. stuff. Just crazy. As with Dave gonna... Sheridan. I've been working yeah, right. a lot with what? Dave Sheridan. Nice. Our favorite That's... doofy. Yeah. That's He's such a awesome. good, oh, good guy. Amazing actor. Can't say enough good things about him. Um, so, and he's in Victor Crowley. Yeah. yeah. So, I, Jay, I know you want to talk about yeah. that. I do. I want to. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I've put off as long as I can on the Gorehound stuff. So, Felissa, we, we got to talk. Um, one, I just wrote down here that it's so exciting to hear you say you're working with the Terrifier guys. I, uh, I am a gore hound and that movie was tough for me. But my goodness, the ter- what they put together in Terrifier was one of the most brutal practical effects experiences that I've seen. And it's done so well. Like, it's so, so well. visceral. And everything you want from that, and even some you don't, probably. So the fact that you got to work with them, how are they behind the scenes? Are they like the nicest guys ever? Or they're like, what, um, what, like how's okay. that team? It's that team, which consists of like Damian Leone, and then you have David mm-hmm. Howard Thornton, who plays the iconic Art the Clown. Our, right. Like, yes. To me, it's the most you know, iconic contemporary villain we have. I will really. say it's so visual. Like we don't have visual villains anymore. The Babadook almost got it one, but it's not a yeah. repeatable villain. You know, we have creepy things, but no like icons anymore. And uh, that's you know, art. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Victor Crowley hit that, hit that, uh, hit that touch bone for me in the early aughts when they started like making him out of Newberry and things and, and Adam. And it's all funny that. you say that, Joey, because that's how I feel. I feel like Victor Crowley and Art Klein are, there, are yeah. like the contemporary, yeah. you know, villains After for you sure. get past like uh, the, the 2000s, because early 2000s, we started getting into the like the really uh, what I would consider torture porny aspects oh, of yeah. it so you have your more of your saws you have your more of your hostels the which the I, so, have and you just remakes. named two that i'm madly yeah. in love with oh yeah and i've got nothing against those but that was um, you don't have uh you have the jigsaw villain but he's not like a slasher it's it's a nuance it whatever. is it's a totally different type of, but like yeah. you don't have a, a michael myers or a pumpkin head or a you know or thing. Jason. You don't have those icons and yeah. then victor crowley comes around and they just were like okay we're gonna make the exact movie that we wanted, that we wish the the Friday the Thirteenth guys were making now, as opposed to this Michael Bay bullshit. I love Sorry. you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've thought a lot about this. I love you, and I love Adam Green. I mean, to oh me, yes, Adam no. Green is our contemporary master. You know, he's so he's so good. And well, and the thing that I appreciate about Adam is the just his love of practical effects oh. because. The, the, the element of horror that I do want us to get into of like being able to appreciate that visceral level so it can open up creative cognizances and you can, you know, release and explore without the fear of repercussion. That's where I think kids get smart because of that. But with I Victor Crowley, and honestly, side note, you may have one of the best Victor Crowley deaths in the whole run. <clears throat> Thank you, Kane Hodder. Um, yeah. <laughs> Q, are you familiar with, with her death like, in Victor Crowley? That, 
I all right. So here here we go. Okay, full, and and full disclosure. This is Q. Full I disclosure. I warned Q against Terrifier. Yes. I won't let him watch it. <laughs> There are no. there are there are certain horror films that I am yeah. gaga about. I am not a gore guy, and so there many films I have seen through Jay. Jay will relay a film to me and be like, "Hey, man, this is super good. Here's the story. Here's the character," and then I'll be like, "Okay, it's worth it. I'll check it out." Yeah. Um, I can say that. Uh, the Victor Crowley stuff, I haven't seen. The Terrifier stuff, I haven't seen. Uh, they're not pretty because... hard. They're... The... And that's, <laughs> and that's the only also... reason. It's it's comedy. You know, there's yes. a lot of... Sure. Uh, it's, you know, so you might, you might do well with that. Terrifier, I told him straight up, don't watch Terrifier. Because I was like... And Terrifier's... I told him about the scene. You know, it's like... Well, there's a girl the like scene. suspended and there's a thing. And he's like, no, there's I a... can't even get through you telling me about this. And <laughs> uh -huh. I was like, yeah, right. I was like, and, and I was like, and they're pretty brutal when they film it. So brutal. and the terrifier guys, just to go back to that, are the nicest people on the planet was on the lens. I'm so madly in love with them. Like anything they do, I don't care if I'm on the set just serving coffee yeah. because I'm obsessed with them. Terrifier 2, I also, I make a cameo in that and I am thrilled because I, I yeah. I'm so excited. I, and I got I'm to so watch happy. my scene. I love oh, it. Oh, Felissa, I'm so happy for you. I'm so excited. Oh, thank I, you. Oh, I definitely want to continue our, like, offline our chat because they, they're, like, right now, I think they're it. Like, I, I can't wait for thank what they you. do. I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah. But but now, to you back to the Adam Green or back to the yeah. Adam Victor Crowley thing. Yeah. Where Victor Crowley is super fun is it's basically they've given him so much money to be like, can you make like what if Mortal Kombat had real fatalities? Like what if a dude ripped somebody's <laughs> spine out of his back and then beat another dude to death with it? And Adam Green's like, I can make that happen with plaster and blood. And they're like, here's a bunch of money and put it in a movie. Do that. And it's great. Yeah, and it's awesome. And it's, I mean, Daniel Harris is in it. I mean, it's Scream Queens galore. I mean, oh, I, was, I was so happy Tiffany when they brought Shepis, you in. Laura mm -hmm. Ortiz, yeah. Yeah, like it's, he, it's it's just Adam Green's love letter to 80s slasher practical effects gore movies. And All right, so I'll watch it. Here, here's the deal. So to, to kind of clarify, I love horror. I love horror yeah, stories. He does. I like hearing, uh, I listen to horror podcasts. I like hearing grisly, gory details described to me for some reason, whatever <laughs> it is, I can't necessarily watch like brutal gore. Sometimes I can, if it's like a super, like super over the top, like ridiculous level. Dale, Dale and like, Tucker oh, versus evil. Like right. Dale and Tucker versus evil. Is, I watched and I love. Yeah. Um, okay. I could see also if you enjoy Sleepaway Camp, it's not gory. Yeah. No. Sleepaway exactly. Camp actually hardly has any blood. Exactly. Yes. And honestly, we'll get back to this. That's a great transition to talk away Sleepaway Camp and then to go into horror because Q does love Sleepaway Camp. Like those types of twisty horror mindfuck type movies. Oh, Q's I am all, all over it. The ghost I'm, stories was one a couple of years ago that we obsessed over because we really loved how yep. like they adapted it from the stage and all that. Like, yes, just twisty yep. horror of things like I, that. I'm a big fan too, and I'd love to know, Felissa, where you kind of lie on this too. We've seen um, kind of a a resurgence, or not even a resurgence, almost like a new genre created um jordan peele's been a big part of it nia DaCosta has a her candy man remake coming out but it's yeah. this kind of like socio-political kind of takes Love on it. so you're so you're dealing with these like class and race versions mm -hmm. of horror stories and mm -hmm. that stuff who i am like i'm so here for it it's such a unique creative kind of genre um, I agree and I, with you. I super intelligent. It gets you thinking. I'm like you. I do. I'm a. I love a great story as much as like I love slashers. I love them. Sure. I mean, to me, they're almost like just children. I embrace makes 
they're to me like I want to see have popcorn and like yeah they're like candy in. they're like candy you're like candy they, yeah you're they not watching me. it to like yeah like take notes you're just watching this have fun it's candy <laughs> <laughs> but then like you have the mist did you love do you love oh, the mist I love oh, the mist boy wait, wait wait let's clarify black and white version of the mist <laughs> oh. <laughs> It was and, and I'll beautiful. I'll even I'll even suspend my dis usual dislike for CGI effects and horror for that one because I, uh, same I mean, with me that is true. Yeah. I, I will suspend it for different movies like I like I mentioned the Babadook earlier. I love it follows. I love because it's so oh, like a lot it of follows. Yeah, like those movies. I I just I mean Q. I think you and same. I had like a two hour long discussion about it follows after we saw it uh, here in Nashville. Yes. Like. It was, I love those types of things. And so, well, yeah, so I, and that to me is why uh, people who love horror are so open-minded and creative. And to your point, Felissa, and why I asked the question, almost always the nicest people in the world. Oh my god, they have no qualms about, oh, well, this is, I have an outlet for this. And I understand where violence fits into things. And I understand how the society's like stitching fits like they're just nice people came there's no judgment example. it's a community of people who embrace each other i mean i have truly found my dearest friends from from either working in this genre or uh going to conventions so i met one of my well so many of my best friends from going to conventions mm -hmm. and one of like my greatest friends on the planet in the world he came to my table like six years ago at atlanta days of the dead we just started shooting shit about horror movies uh he was living in wisconsin he really wanted to make horror movies i said come out to california we haven't stopped working together since and he is my joy but that particular scenario is just one of a billion because yeah. We all love each other and respect each other and care for each other on a level that's really deep that I don't feel anyone, look, we're not going to rom-com conventions. We're not <laughs> going to drama yeah. conventions. You know, there is something, a hold and a, and a strong bond with, within these, mm. you know, with these films, within these circles that is like nothing I've ever experienced, and it's and, and the you obviously experience it, and you obviously experience it at an entirely different level. Like I'm coming at it almost from entirely as a fan perspective, and you have both sides of the spectrum as a fan, as as someone like within the industry and looked up to. And again, Sleepaway Camp is an iconic film in the horror genre, especially in the what I would consider the WTF horror genre, like the what are we doing this is amazing like the, just the outside thought around it and like and i think there is a visceral level to horror movies that bridges that connection it's there is something so just in baked into our dna about watching it and experiencing it and having that fear like the fear that open breaks down barriers and allows you to be vulnerable around people and if you're scared around people, you immediately connect with them. That's um, so true. That's true. So, so and I love to be scared like that. Oh, yeah, the adrenaline. I want it. I want it. So, as to jump off where where Joey said, uh, one of his sleepaway camps, one of his you know favorite WTF horror movies. Uh, I must say, so th that. That particular movie made our top five list, and I know we mentioned it previously. Yeah. So, spoiler alert podcast. for anybody listening who hasn't seen uh, uh, Sleepaway Camp. We deep dive into Sleepaway Camp in our episode of top five uh, most mind fuck movies. Um, because <laughs> I love that. the crazy part about Sleepaway Camp, and I'm this is so weird because I'm telling you what I think the craziest part of Sleepaway Camp <laughs> I, is. I'm I love hearing this. But the fact <laughs> that that movie is is for the most part a pretty straightforward <laughs> slasher. Like it's a pretty straightforward movie until the climax. And it's probably like unless 
unless you, you know, you have the opening kind of flashback scene about the history and the father and the mother and like what's going on in this family. Um, but un <laughs> unless you're like, I don't know, like super uh, 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 psychically tuned in to where this story is going to go, there is zero chance that you're going to guess the end of this film. And I've, I've talked with Jay a million times. There's almost no movie that I have seen since that I have ever been that caught off guard by the end of a movie and been like, wow, what, what, what is even happening? So I have to ask reading that script when you were, did 13. you have a similar reaction? Like what was your thought? Were you like, what? Like well, you're you know on the what? last That's page and you're like, and I have a what? You know what? <laughs> no. And I'll tell you why, because on my callback, so I had my audition. Uh -huh. I met with Robert Hiltzik, the writer director. We mm -hmm. immediately hit it off. I loved him. He, I guess, you know, felt like I could take on this character. And then they called back a handful of girls, like 10 girls to meet with the producer as well. And when I, when I was with my mom and we were sitting in the um, waiting room, the other producer, there were like two producers and Robert and one of the producers came out and said to my mom, we have to ask permission from all the parents. Is it okay? Oh, spoiler. Is it okay spoiler. if your daughter wears uh, <clears throat> a piece at the end of this film? <laughs> That's and they're how like they, what you're like 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 enhanced like a boob piece. You're like, what are we talking? About? <laughs> I am wear like a yeah. Oh like no, a, 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 like a wee wee piece. A wee wee piece. <laughs> that's the professional. So, that's the that's the industry term, guys. A right. wee wee piece. A wee wee piece. So meanwhile, we didn't really know what that meant, and my mom was like, "Sure, you know, like let her go into do the callback. We'll right. you know, <laughs> sure, well, whatever." Like, it like was a wig, a piece. Too. Like a piece. Everything yeah. was whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Whatever. Um, and I went in and got, you know, I got the part, and then they decided not to do the wee wee piece, and they did the mold of the face and put it on. But so when I read the script, I had known that there was this end. Oh, that that was coming. Okay. So it was clear. This girl, I was the only one with the real script, and I read it, and I thought, what a fun movie because it felt wait, authentic did you, say, did you say you were the only one that knew that like you were the only one that had that version of the yeah, script yeah they I hadn't given the script to that. anybody else man they're pulling the jj abrams before he even got in the game they didn't want <laughs> and you know for fear of the cat they of oh, I love it. Three did it with with hatchet yeah. four i love it with victor crowley yeah I, well I, I love that methodology now i love like the whole surprise things surprise honestly I'll be completely, completely honest. This is like back when I saw it and before Wikipedia and you can research movies and all that. And I can sound like I know more than I do. If you would ask me in high school or, or like the end, I'd be like, they filmed a different ending. Like they had another movie written and they changed it to that because it is so out of left field and they hide it so well that in my high, like in my non-knowing brain, I was like, there's no way that was just a re-edit. Like they rewrote that ending and I clunkered know. it on, I mean, but it's but not. But if you rewatch like the movie, I know. And most times I think people who watch the movie go back to the very beginning. Yeah. They watch, you have to watch it again. Because you have to, you realize it was intended because everything makes sense then. Yep. The fabric of the film is put together in a way, although Robert yeah. Hilton still to this day, and, and we're, we're embarking on creating a documentary about Sleepaway Camp, we've already filmed half of it. He says he wrote the beginning and the end. And I always say you filled it in with a baseball scene. <laughs> right that baseball scene goes on for a long time <laughs> he just he's really like, likes the baseball he's like we need like, to oh, connect God. we need to get to point a to point b and i have this idea for a baseball scene this is my field of dreams <laughs> i think he felt like camp had sure you know, it felt like real camp and we yeah. were really 13 14 15 years right. old all of us 
Wow. That's that's so wild. Now, were you prior, you know, I know that was a young age. Were you a horror fan prior to that movie or was that not really? Not really, something? no. I mean, yeah. I really, at that age, I, I was in dancing school all day, yeah. every day, really. I wanted to be a musical theater actress. I stuck at singing and dancing, but I thought I could, uh. you know, learn and get better. And then um, once I did sleepaway camp, my love for horror w- yeah. grew exponentially. And I was like, wait a second, this is like, I also was, uh, you know, around Ed French, an amazing effects yeah. artist. I got to watch these practical effects being created right in front of me, oh, right man. on the set. And I was like, whoa, this is extraordinary. Like, I can't even believe what Just I'm watching. And I got it. so yeah. excited. It's the fun of it. Like, it's like when you're a kid and you're setting up army scenes in the backyard and you're figuring out how to make like the hills blow up or you're like building like, all right, well, how do I make this slide run from the tree to the ground? It's just, it's the creation of it. It's so fun making something that feels real that's not. So wonderful. So I want to ask too, um, you know, we've deep, deep dove into horror and your love of horror films. What other kind of media are you a fan of are you a tv person are you a book person are you a comic book person we're on the nerd uh, um, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> that, that was excellent Q. thank you excellent. i'm a professional uh, segwayer so, it was so I, lo- I love that <laughs> i am i am not unfortunately i'm not a really i'm not a real tv person just because I feel it, it's time consuming and I, I don't unfortunately get attached. I don't have time. Sure. Like none of us have time. We sure. make the choice. Yeah. I haven't made the choice to like, I don't really watch TV. I'm a documentary fanatic. Mm. Live, especially true crime. Oh, I, I, uh, okay. All about it. But we, uh, we have, we have Pluto TV in our house and I go to sleep to forensic files every night. So you and me, Felissa. Do you, Felissa? Do you have a uh, recent true crime documentary that you would like to recommend? Something I mean, like, like the Staircase. You know. Oh. Um, do you see the Night Stalker? So good. Did either of you watch Night Stalker? On Night Netflix Stalker. Or, yeah, that was good. What's the recent one? It. I just watched it. My camera. It's like the American next door neighbor or something. Oh, the uh, American oh. portrait or, uh, or yes, uh, about the man in Colorado. Yes. 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 Uh, my wife, Amanda watched that and was said it was great. It's um, so incredibly hard. Like that one was heartbreaking. Yeah. That I will get to was... say, I am also a huge true crime doc fan and did you watch abducted in plain sight on Netflix? yes yes, yes. one of the most like bonkers oh like scenarios God. okay like everyone uh, hated him everyone uh, mom, yeah. dad, kids, it's everybody. it's chris i will i will tell you so i got to with project nerd like two years ago i got to go to the wichita the tall grass film festival and i got to meet and chat with sky the director sky borgman of abducted in plain sight and i was like i was like true crime nerding out because i was like all right you got to tell me all the stuff that didn't make the documentary like could you share anything right now because that was a big one i watched that two years ago yeah Yeah. i'm obsessed with it because i don't understand it there's no like i've never said we all have kids we're all parents the hell that was that was legitimately my first question to her. I was like, Sky, I have to ask, like, do you genuinely, after talking with these people, do you feel in your heart that they genuinely like were duped by this? Or were they like openly just like, well, maybe this will never like amount to anything. And she was like, she said wholeheartedly, she was like, I truly feel after talking with them that like these people like didn't know like it like it it's so obvious to all of us but when they were so close to it and so in it it was obviously terrible judgment across the board but she said it it felt like like they for for better or for worse were 
actually oblivious to what was going on and that like blew my mind because that's all i ever want you know when i watch these true crime docs i'm like i gotta talk to that i gotta know like yeah. what were what you happened like, i want to yeah. shake them but and also be like, like you? It, you know again we're parents kids i know it was the late 70s right it was the late yes. 70s yeah it was a different time look i was you sure. know i was alive and well and doing stuff to the end of the 70s it was a different lifestyle but, but, yeah, Perry, but, I thank would, you. I, like, he was in the bed with the daughter. And you knew that. Like, there. It's, it Agreed. was, and that was the thing. I even, I made my parents watch it because, and, and, and they're like, no, no, we were alive before this time. This has never been a thing. <laughs> it's never been okay. <laughs> like, this I will tell never, you where. I'm, I'm, gonna, been... I'm gonna say this right now knowing that you're a you're a big true crime fan i will try and put into works if you'd be interested i would love to have you and sky and all of us in a chat and we could have yeah. like a a oh. true crime yeah episode come on chat of yeah. some sort we could do yes. it well, we do it. Totally, yeah. let's do it because i, I do consider it. that one of my mo my number one it's yeah. my number one most like, I mean, you can't say loved because it's like, <laughs> sure, yeah, like, no, I mean, yeah, a whole like, like, whoa, it's the best one. All right, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna send yeah. this episode when it's done to Sky. Sky, if you're listening to this episode yeah. right here, clearly please, we please, have to please. do this episode. You hear Felissa, she loved your documentary. Let's talk about loved, it. Loved, loved. Yeah. I have so <laughs> many questions. I mean, I, yeah. I was actually filming a lifetime movie. Um, uh, two years ago, and I I was with Eric Roberts, and you know we're nice. all on set with the whole crew, and all we could talk about was this doc. Was that this yeah? All we talked about every day. With they were like uh, first team to set, and we were like in in the green room, like over coffee. Like, we didn't, You're we like, were like no, wait, no. Wait. Have you got to the aliens part yet? No, fuck. There's aliens. There's no. I'm serious. <laughs> no, it's like episode six. He talks about fucking aliens. <laughs> Things just like escalate like <laughs> off the chart to like new levels of absurdity. Because I need to know that I need to know. There's so I have like I have a list of questions. Well, save them up. Start writing them yeah. down. Yeah, that's I, be great. I am I am determined to make this happen now. Good. Um, so I, you, so you, thank when you. you put your mind to something, Q, I've seen you do wonders. So make this happen. Amazing I'm obsessed. Yeah. I am uh, obsessed. So, I will say, and and Felissa, before you is change he still topics, alive? Then, no. The no, the old guy's not. The fa the, no. the 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 daughter is. Um, yeah. But yeah. Because she was okay, on at the so, end of it, and she, yeah. yeah. So Felissa, I do have a recommendation for you if you haven't seen it in that. Please. Because one of my favorites, and it's a gut punch. Don't get me wrong; it's one of the saddest documentaries. Oh I've no. seen, I love it. But it's Dear Zachary. Have you seen that one? No. Oh, it's a true crime sort of. It's oh. not like murdery true crime, but it's about a child. Like custody and yes. like documentary if you want it's severe family. depression watch it's dear zachary it's good though you, it sticks you with you. Say, if you want weird depression <laughs> yeah. it, it, it sticks with you it sticks with you hard <laughs> i do stay i tend to i notice that i um uh, how about the staircase did we all, did you see oh, that? Yes. Amazing. That I saw that at the same time that I saw the jinx. Like I was oh, watching the jinx about Robert Dersh funny. and the staircase simultaneously. And I was like, what is happening? What is happening? I, he killed the two women and two women died. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, I just don't. I don't know. I, you're right. That was the entire just, time I'm watching. I'm like, and nobody is like, yeah, th this guy definitely did this, right? Like, that was a bird. Definitely. I, like, you know what, from the opening, you know it. When he's taking the reporter around the pool and he's talking about it so nonchalantly, yeah. like, dude, what? <laughs> this is a, like, he had no yeah. emotion. Yeah, no, and I was like, it. murderer. Like, yes. <laughs> listen, I haven't I met there. many right murderers, there. but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Murderer. That's Murderer. what I felt like. Yes. It was it's it's wild. Uh oh, I love man. that. I could I could legitimately talk true crime all day. Uh um, I know I could too. It's I, my favorite. I love that you're a fan. Yeah. That makes sense because I 
I do feel like in a way, true crime and like the horror genre, those are like those are like two very close sectors in people's brain. You know well, what I mean? It's just a scientific. Uh, it's a scientific look at the uh, and the criminal uh, criminal look at the actions that happen in horror movies. Yeah, that's that. I want what happens afterwards. Like you know, you get stabbed at a, at a summer camp, and then there's somebody coming afterwards. It's like Dustin for fingerprints. We're just watching that show and the movie. Listen, I'm going to yeah. throw an yeah. idea out there, and Felissa, since you have the connections, if you want to make something happen with this, go for it. I would 100% buy a ticket or a, a, a rental fee of a true crime documentary that is done in the style of a true crime documentary about an outlandish slasher killer. Like one that <laughs> one that like almost uh what was that movie almost like behind, behind the, the mask, mask. But, yes, uh, yes. Vernon. but, but instead like that. less meta and more like an actual documentary like less winking and more just like all right, so this serial killer terrorized the summer camp for three respective years, murdering 30 people before the police ever got involved. Like, it was just like, you know, I really want like a deep dive, almost, what was that that uh, fake documentary on Netflix? Oh, American Vandal about American the- American Vandal, about oh, the yeah. pooper thing, yeah. Yeah, I would like that, but with like a, a Michael Myers or Victor Crowley or, type character. Or like actually taking real kills from those movies. Yes. And analyzing Ooh. them. In well, I am going to say, I just worked on a movie called Massacre Academy, and okay. Dave Sheridan plays the um, the killer. Uh -huh. Holy. Spoiler alert. But, well, they kind of like the poster has him. He looks like Jeffrey Dahmer. Nice. I sat behind the camera and watched Dave Sheridan create this monster. It was, it was on the same level as I'm really saying this as Anthony Hopkins in Hannibal. Yeah, like, wow. I mean, like it struck you. I was like, he told me once he was wrapped. He wasn't even like there. He was definitely channeling, and I. And when people see this, you are going to be, you will be struck in a very visceral way. Like it's, it's unnerving. Oh, I was completely awesome. like, what? I didn't even look like him. It was so odd. I was he just like very embodied very this. This he did. There were certain actors who were like that. I always say he's Christian Bale of the indie world because. Most people I don't know that. that he was in Ghost World or Sex Drive right. or even Victor Crowley. He's in all these amazing movies, but you don't know who he is because he's disguised. He yeah, completely, sure. you know, he's got like a crazy. Gary Oldman vibe to him. He's like, he's like, oh, he's he just does. Moving. He does. He's a chameleon. I work with him on. Yeah. We've done now probably twelve projects at least together. Oh, and wow. I don't even when he gets to set, I'm like, I don't even want to talk to you. I don't know. But he's helped, <laughs> watching him elevates, I think he's helped me in my performances because it's that energy and he's helped me see well, yeah. like, you know, get into that skin, really go there, forget the words, be that person. And it's like, yeah. wow. Like you're that's like actually scared at this point and that's why it looks so real. You have, I have to show you a picture of him, it's crazy. Um, but I also love comic books. And I will yes. use that as a segue. You are also a segue master. <laughs> I'm a segue master. I'm a segue master. Um, I am now embarking on being in the comic book world. I announced yes. today on Instagram and later I will put it on Facebook and Twitter and all those beautiful social platforms that are incredible that we can so, um, you know, utilize to express all the yes. projects we have going. Mm -hmm. It's called Lake Thorn. Brought uh, the most amazing team came to me and said, "Let's do a really fun comic book with you at the center. You know, uh, portraying a character and nice. a camp setting and fun, lively, vibrant characters." And I'm like, "What?" Um, and the whole team, Donna, Drew, Ro, um, Big Deal Productions. They have. We've been working so hard on making something so special and i'm really proud of it that sounds amazing now is there an eta of when you guys yeah. are shooting for this to come out 
it sh- it should come out October of 2021. Okay. Um, and the uh, Vo is the illustrator, and he'll be um, he's in the process of creating that. And Drew just re- I put everyone's name and handles on my Instagram, and I'm just you know for me like I'm I'm a person who likes to do a million things. Yeah. So I also enjoy, mm-hmm. I got into producing. I started, I have a podcast with Kane Hunter and Tiffany Shepis. I'm Ooh. doing the comic book. I just love life. And I, I well, want well, ways the, to express myself podcast. like everyone, right? Yeah, What's we've been that, talking everyone? horror. Plug the podcast. What's the name of the podcast that you do with Kane? My podcast is called Casualty Friday. Nice. I like we it. have a lot I'll of fun and sometimes like it's that. just the three of us shooting the shit. I always say we're the we're just actors from our perspective. We take the mask off, we go real deep. Sometimes we cry, sometimes we fight, sometimes we laugh. Um, the three of us are super close friends and uh, we tell stories we've never told before. And we have guests at times like Dee Wallace and uh, Greg Nicotero, Joe Bob yeah. Briggs, you know, great people. <laughs> you gotta come no, on. I- I have to say, I haven't, uh, I haven't like in any in depth way got the opportunity, but I did meet Kane probably, I don't know, six oh, years or so man. ago at a uh, horror convention, um, just in passing. It wasn't even at like a table or anything. Um, and he was genuinely, he embodied what you have said, which is all of these guys that are these like huge, hulking, you know, brutes in these movies. He was just the nicest guy that i've ever had the chance to just like chat with so that makes me so intrigued i'm gonna check out your podcast because i want to hear those kind of like you said the behind the mask kind of stories this is just from your perspective that sounds awesome i will say especially kane kane seems to be um really embracing this podcast in a way that's become an outlet for him where he's told stories he's never revealed before because wow. it's sort of like, you know, from his heart, and this is the kind of platform where he, you know, look, he's always going to be the big hulking Victor Crowley or Jason. He, sure, that's yeah. him. But his heart is bigger than anyone I know. You can see him at a convention taking a child that's like a, 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 a person, a young person who's come to his table out to dinner with a parent, maybe that person has, you know, he's gone through his burns and he has great empathy and great sympathy Mm -hmm. for people who've gone through other obstacles in life. He's just really beautiful. I I can say I have watched a handful of YouTube interviews with Kane and actually think he was on Danielle Harris's podcast a little bit ago and they had a really good episode. Um, And I think they watched one of his movies. Yeah, Commentar? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it. I'm on it. I I was actually her first guest with Sleep. Were you? Yeah. I, I don't think I've gone that far back in the archive. So yes, I will have to. Maybe it wasn't in that order. Maybe she, you know, yeah. I don't know. Maybe she did all of them. And, sure. Uh, but we had but, a great time. I love Danielle so much. Yeah. Oh, she's again, uh, you know, a favorite of of just mine from back in the Halloween days. You know, just oh, always. Yeah. Just, I think we're she's Danielle around. Harris. I'm still yeah. Like... She's she's like oh yeah. <laughs> I was like coming up around I was like you're in the same oh and you oh and you were in boy meets world come on like it was yeah it was awesome. you were on roseanne yeah it's you just know? so uh, yeah, so, i yeah i i so and and but kane has always just come across as so genuine and that's where a lot of that is like i know you play a big hulking scary guy but i kind of want to just hug you and be nice to you and i want to talk to you and you seem really neat <laughs> like he just and he and really I, I is love, all of his stuff like even hear no evil and and some of the just he's so, so hulking he's so big and he's just this and presence. he's so smart he's like yeah. one of the most intelligent people you'll ever meet and no. he definitely Man. expresses that if we ever speak um you know grammatically incorrectly he will tell us <laughs> i i love that so much the idea of just like Victor Crowley and then become and be like, man, there ain't no way. There isn't any way that you could make that. <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> care less. So, exactly. So Felissa, I have to ask. Yeah. Um, and yeah. 
I think this is a perfect opportunity for another segue um, from the master ta- talking about comic books. Um, our first episode of Recast, uh, I got to be a part of, and we had on comic creator Brian Polito, um, who created Lady Death comics yeah. and uh, runs Coffin Comics currently. And one of the questions towards the end of the interview that we asked him. Um, I really had a lot of fun with and at least every episode I'm on I want to ask that question again because I'm a food person you're from Mm. New York so I know you got to know some good eats and I'm curious as to like when you travel around for cons what are some of your like staples that you like to to visit when you're in different places like what are what's your favorite like on the road food uh, that you like look forward to that's amazing. Thank That's you for question. this question. I'm yeah. a huge foodie. You know, I love I love food. I'm not going to deny it. You know, I'm not one of these size zero <laughs> gals. I mean, I like to eat. Um, well, and especially being from New York, um, because we had all of the authentic cuisine at our fingertips. So, sure. I mean, I lived above a Vietnamese restaurant for many years and I just loved oh, it. Or nice. Brazilian food, like rice and beans and plantains. Oh my gosh, like right now I'm starving. I'm right now on a huge Japanese kick. Um, I am eating so much sashimi because I have to nice. film in Florida nice. and I want, I'm trying to get lean, cut out carbs. But <laughs> I'm Sicilian, Smart. I'm of Italian descent. So, oh, all we do is eat pasta. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love, you know, Rosa Mexicana in, in New York is one of the best authentic, you know, Mexican restaurants or I just, there's so many. I mean, right down the road, I have a place called Bella Cucina. I live in LA, which I, we're always frequenting because my husband loves Italian food. Same, um, same, yeah. Love. Yeah, I can, uh test to that and at conventions it is difficult it is and i try to leave the hotel to find great cuisine that might be a staple in and i've been pretty lucky um you know i'll take whoever i'm with whether it's kane or tiffany or dave sheridan i'm like let's go out and kind of roam around and find something that's local good and to support local restaurants as well for sure for sure if there's anybody who needs the support right now it's local businesses small businesses local restaurants please please yes um when i was in pittsburgh and i i um it was i can't remember the name it was a steakhouse in pittsburgh um overlooking the entire city and it was you know it was owned by this amazing gentleman who came over to us and said thank you so much for being here during the pandemic, it's been very difficult. Oh, we stayed for six hours. Oh, that's awesome. Whoa. He was probably like, all right, get the hell out of here. <laughs> At no, first he was it's... like, thank you so much. And he's like, all he right, like, really? Then he was like- At the four hour mark, he's like, you gotta go. At the six hour mark, he was he's like, like don't. This. You gotta stay. Stay oh, for I'm right. looking at my watch, don't mind me. <laughs> um, I... the best seafood. Oh my gosh. Steak and calamar, oh. and we just well, kept ordering. What? We had oh, about yeah. thirty-two shots of vodka. That's as you do, as you will. Yeah, I'm a vodka lunatic. Really, I See, I'm a bourbon guy myself. So, really, I like I like a little bit of a dark amber in there. <laughs> what about I, you? Q? I, do you drink? Uh, I do uh, occasionally. I'm a whiskey guy. Uh, bourbon guy. Uh, I'm from the South. Jay and I are from the South. So, you know, if you don't, if you don't drink bourbon, what are you, what are you doing? Where are you? Uh, So so, uh, currently I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. (gasps) Do you go to full moon convention? I, I love the full moon, the uh, the whole, the whole crew, but yes, we, I've been to full moon in the past. I haven't gone in the, in the last handful. Um, and then they, they just also, announced like a, it today, I think. Oh, I haven't seen the new the new announcement for it, but I know we've got even like full moon cinema and tattoo parlors and stuff out here. Yep. So yeah, I'm a big fan. Uh, the the Dixons are awesome. That are amazing with full with full moon. Um, that's Stacey actually where, incredible. 
They're so yeah. awesome. I, uh, my wife and I went, uh, there, they have the, their full moon theater. That's, that's, um, yes, their full I love moon the cinema theater. that's connected, yes. connected to the haunted house. Uh, my wife and I went and caught, uh, right before we moved from Nashville, we caught a, uh, a midnight screening on new year's of Rocky horror picture show there. And it uh. was, it was awesome. It was a great time. Uh, they're yeah. good people. And that's actually full moon is where I, um, where I met Kane um oh yeah. nice i don't think i knew that yes um, and they did a big victor crowley for us adam was there yeah. Kane was there i was there that's awesome yeah. yeah so originally i'm from nashville i now live in the midwest i'm in omaha nebraska uh, oh nice yeah my wife is from nebraska and uh two years ago we packed up and decided to move out this way uh Beautiful. and it's been great I love the Midwest. It's it's been awesome. I love the Midwest. I I feel like a lot of my cons are either or I'd say predominantly Midwest, and I do a lot of East Coast as well. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Oh, I well, wait, I, I speaking can't wait of till that world starts back up, I was about to say. Speaking of cons, uh, as cons come more online again, um, and hopefully, you know, the, the sooner, the better. Cause I know we're all as con people, as you, a con guest, as us con fans and, and con, you know, project nerd goes out and, and hosts panels and, and all sorts yeah. of fun stuff at cons across Aww. the country. We're so excited for, for the cons to come back and hopefully we get a chance to run into you at one of the cons. Oh my gosh, yes. definitely. Oh, please. Yes. And, uh, I just want to take the time. We'll go ahead and wrap up here because we've you've been super gracious with your time. Thank I appreciate you, for you your time. talking with us um, again. Uh, feel free. Where can people find you on social media? Where's the best place? I love Instagram and I'm Felissa Rose one, two, three. I love Twitter. Felissa underscore Rose and Facebook. Um, I'm on, you know, a little bit and it's Felissa Rose Esposito Miller. Um, I try to get on everywhere as much as I can to interact and say hello um, and post all things that are going on. So I love social media. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And then what is the next, what is your next out project? So what's the next thing that people can see you in that's, that's coming out? That's coming out. Um, I have a movie called cold blooded killers okay. that um, was uh, produced by Entertainment Factory and it comes out at the end of April. Um, I have a bunch of movies on Amazon Prime like A Nun's Curse and Camp Twilight and um, Big Freaking Rat. Um, like I said, <laughs> Terrifier 2. Stream, The uh, Step Daddy with Vincent Ward. Um, there's a bunch of projects coming out. Nice. A bunch that are will be filmed soon. I'll be at Mad Monster um, in North Carolina. Uh, they have a show awesome. and that will be February 18th, 19th to the 21st. And then I'll be at Atlanta days of the dead from the nice. 26th okay. to the 28th. Perfect. Well, you heard it, heard it here folks where you can go check out Felissa. Uh, she's you. an amazing guest. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you. You're and, amazing. I love uh, the two of you. Like I said, oh, we're we really going to try like to uh, put together a, a true crime show that we can all shoot our true crime Can't knowledge wait yeah perfect well th well thank you again uh thank i'll you. send you a link when this episode goes live everybody Please. go ch go check out felissa go check her out follow her on social media Aww. so don't forget to check out project hyphen nerd.com it is your number one spot for nerd news around the world you can also check out the project nerd podcast network we have 12 different shows a variety of content whatever you're a nerd about it's guaranteed we've got something for you and finally don't forget to migrate on over to the youtube channel hit subscribe under the project hyphen nerd channel and check out all the amazing video content that we're putting out for you this year and in the meantime i've been q and i'm jay and we've been and joined by Phil yeah <laughs> she's yes! one of us one yeah, of it. us one of <laughs> us <laughs> and we'll see you on the you next <laughs> we love you we'll see you on the next nerdcast recast